The movie opens up on a hilly road in China, where a woman is asking for a lift. It appears as if her car is broken down. A truck driver eagerly offers to help, but the woman ignores him, thinking he's a pervert. Shortly after, a decent-looking man arrives in a car and the woman quickly gets in. But sadly, her decision turns out to be fatal, as she finds a mutilated human hand near her seat. This proves that the innocent-looking man is actually a serial killer. The very next minute, he stops his car, grabs a wrench, and bludgeons the woman to death. A few days later, Later, a public bus containing several passengers is traveling through this same road. Wang, an insurance agent, is keeping the driver, Tony, entertained by telling him about how a woman went missing some days ago in this very place. Meanwhile, an announcement on the radio informs everyone that there has been a serious accident in a nearby junction, because of which all roads are blocked. One of the passengers, Lee, mentions that he has to reach his job on time, so the driver, Tony, suggests they take a detour via an off-road. Nobody objects to the decision. and. So the doomed journey begins. Along the way, they enter a dark tunnel, which Tony reveals he has never come across. Nonetheless, he continues driving, but suddenly, a mysterious man comes in the way, forcing the bus to a halt. Everyone is terrified as to what he's doing in the middle of the dark tunnel, but the man turns out to be a passenger, and he too gets on the bus. Lee, who is reading a newspaper, finds out that the mysterious man is a wanted criminal, so he covertly takes out a knife for protection. There are two women on the bus, Sarah, an aspiring model, and Jing, a pregnant lady. As for kids, a pair of twin siblings, Park and Fang, are present. The brother, Fang, seems to be autistic, but his sister is always there to look after him. After 20 minutes of driving, the bus is still inside the tunnel, so Tony starts suspecting something's up. He knows that the longest tunnel in the country is just 11 kilometers long, which takes roughly 10 minutes to cross. Hence, the group decides to turn around and head back the way they came from. But surprisingly, even after 30 minutes of traveling at full speed, the entrance does not show up. It's an endless, dark tunnel which shows no signs of any other living organisms. Scared, the driver, Tony, stops the bus and everyone gets out to inspect. Strangely, the pregnant lady, Jing, finds her mobile phone which she had accidentally dropped about an hour earlier near the entrance. This proves that the tunnel is not an ordinary one. When everyone starts panicking, Lee takes charge of the situation and tells everyone to calm down. He also decides to walk on foot for a few hours to find help, but since it's very easy to get lost in the tunnel, he wants to take a long rope for better navigation. Lee will be carrying one end of the rope and walking, while the other end will be held by the insurance guy, Wang. Luckily for him, the pregnant lady has plenty of knitting wool with her. This is the first time I've ever seen knitting come in handy as a hobby. Before he departs, the mysterious man who stopped the bus earlier also expresses his desire to join him, and Lee reluctantly agrees. Along the way, the two introduce each other, and the man's name is revealed to be Chan. However, he doesn't talk about his work or family. After a while, it starts getting foggy, and the Passengers near the bus see two figures approaching them from the other end. Scared, they get ready to face whatever confronts them. But to their surprise, the figures turn out to be none other than Lee and Chien. Somehow, they have again ended up at Ground Zero, the place from where they took off. It gets even weirder here. As Wang is still holding one end of the rope, he experiences a sudden tug when Chien pulls it from the other end, despite them being adjacent to each other. The tunnel is straight, but yet, it leads people to the same place again and again, like an endless loop. Ha, <laughs> we said the title. Realizing that they have been trapped, Lee suggests everyone gather their food items and ration them wisely. Then, all the four men head out to inspect the place while the three ladies and the autistic Fang rest inside the bus. It's been only 30 minutes, but when Jing wakes up, she finds out that the entire bus is covered in dust. Taken aback, she wakes everyone up and quickly rushes outside. At the same time, the men also arrive and find the bus in a dilapidated condition. Tony immediately goes to check on the food, but finds that everything has become rotten. This proves that not only is the tunnel endless, but time also moves very differently here. A single hour of the outside world equals a week here. When they return back to the bus, a map of the entire tunnel is waiting for them. It appears as if someone dropped it off and left without a trace. Lee deduces that someone is playing with them and immediately takes up the challenge. He places the map on a table and starts analyzing the place. Just then, the lights unexpectedly go out, and when they come back on, Lee has vanished. Instead, a bloody trail is seen, which the group wear Lee follows. Now, with Lee abducted or possibly killed, the mysterious man Chien takes charge of the group. The bloody trail leads them to a wall which appears to be hollow. On breaking it, they come across a strange room which has a lot of wanted pictures, a bunch of severed hands, and most importantly, an engineering diagram of the place. It shows that there are six separate tunnels in total, with one leading to another. Chien deduces that in order to escape, they have to cross all six tunnels. He also assumes that this secret room will have an entrance that will lead to the second tunnel. As the group 
continue searching the room, they find a weird calendar with all the dates showing July 15th. Chien realizes that it's a clue, and when he rips the calendar off of the wall, a secret wooden door is revealed. After everyone leaves, the television in the room starts showing a woman who has been trapped inside a small cave. Next, the group enters the second tunnel, which strangely also has their bus parked at the exact same spot. They wonder if they have arrived at Ground Zero, but upon checking, realize that the tunnel is the exact same, but in a different time zone. The group quickly heads inside the bus, which is now wrapped with barbed wire, and starts looking for food. They find a carton of instant noodles, but by this time, the driver, Tony, has become hostile and greedy. He finds a gun in one of the seats and threatens the others to hand over all the food items. Fearing for their lives, the group reluctantly complies. Since time is moving at a rapid rate, all of them feel hungry instantly, and this is slowly turning the group into animals. After a while, the model, Sarah, can't bear the hunger anymore, so she goes to Tony with a deal. In exchange for a packet of instant noodles, she is willing to sell her body. Tony immediately agrees, and the two make passionate love. While they're at it, Wang sneaks inside the bus and grabs a packet for himself. Wang's a genius. However, Tony catches wind of this and starts beating him to a pulp. Wang's not a genius. But before he can finish the insurance guy off, someone stabs him from behind. Soon, the rest of the group arrives at the scene and is shocked to witness the murder. Despite this, Wang is unconcerned, and he starts searching for a packet of food that he dropped earlier. When he crouches beneath the bus, he finds a manhole. The group immediately pushes the bus and enters the manhole, through which they reach another mysterious room. This one also has some strange pictures and mutilated human parts in it. Moreover, the television shows the woman from earlier slowly being drowned inside the cave. Disregarding this, the group searches for an exit route, and again finds the same calendar there. On removing it, another secret door is revealed. Soon, everyone goes through, and they eventually reach the third tunnel. But to their surprise, this tunnel is wet and darker than before. The bus is also present there, but it has been overrun by rodents and snakes. Desperate for food, Wang eats some rotten noodles, which he regrets instantly. Seeing him in this condition, Jing pities him and hands him a biscuit, but Wang becomes increasingly aggressive and demands the entire packet. When she refuses, he surprisingly brings out a gun and steals everyone's food at gunpoint. But even after this, his reign of terror continues. He deduces that they found a secret passage every time one of them dies. For instance, they found the wall when Lee was abducted and the manhole when Tony was stabbed. Hence, he threatens to shoot one of the remaining survivors to ensure that he escapes the place. Qian tries to calm him down, but Wang does not listen. Instead, he forces the innocent Jing to shoot Qian in the shoulder. After this, the maniac takes the twins to the nearby room and starts beating them up. When Fang tries to save her brother, Wang brutally eliminates her by firing at her multiple times. The poor autistic boy Park can just sob as his sister slowly breathes her last. The out-of-control Wang then attempts to strangle Sarah, but before he can do so, someone impales him from behind. Now, with an additional two people dead, the group find a secret passage through which they reach the fourth tunnel, which is a psychedelic tunnel. Just then, Jing goes into labor and rests on the side with Park, while an injured Qian and Sarah head to investigate the bus. The psychedelic nature of the place makes Sarah hallucinate, and she starts seeing people. Scared, she comes out of the bus and heads in the opposite direction, where several dead bodies are lying around. There, she notices a mirror, and as she stares into it, someone approaches her from behind and finishes her off. Meanwhile, Qian returns to Jing, who has given birth to a baby boy. The remaining three then proceed forward, but along the way, it is revealed that the little boy has passed away. Qian tries to convince Jing to keep going, but just then, she takes out a knife and stabs him to death. Surprisingly, after a while, he wakes up in a secret compound. It appears as if he has woken up from some sort of experiment. Then, we are taken to a top secret military meeting. This is where everything finally unfolds. An army general reveals that the serial killer from the start of the movie, James, has been caught. The problem is that he was apprehended from a car wreck in a totally vegetative state. And now, he has fallen into a coma. James had kidnapped and murdered several women, but one particular, named Ciara, is rumored to still be alive. The problem is that no one knows where she is locked up except for the serial killer himself. And since he's in a coma, it's impossible to interrogate him. Hence, the military has decided to collaborate with the best brain research institute in the country. Their plan is to conduct the memory transfusion with James in order to tap into his subconscious and eventually figure out about the victim's whereabouts. Yesterday, a remarkable psychotherapist of the institute finally broke into James's consciousness and found certain clues. The psychotherapist is revealed to be none other than Qian. One of the army generals then asserts that they need to have faith in Qian because he, above all others, is more concerned about the victim's safety. It turns out that the victim, Ciara, is none other than Qian's wife. This is where all the events begin to make sense, as everything that we 
saw earlier transpired inside James's subconsciousness. However, Qian's job is far from over. In yesterday's experiment, he managed to find a preliminary clue from a calendar on the wall that his wife is imprisoned near Shang River. But the situation is critical because of the heavy downpour. In the next 36 hours, all caves on either banks of the river will be completely flooded by the rising river, hence putting Ciara's life at risk. As a result, Qian needs to tap into James's subconscious once again tomorrow so that he can find more clues about Ciara's exact location. That night, as Qian is sitting by himself, the army general approaches him to ask about the progress. Qian then starts sharing his experience inside James's consciousness and remembers that the date, July 15, 1996, often appeared on calendars. The chief explains that it's the date where the serial killer's parents both died. During that fateful day, his father found out that his mother had an affair with a driver. This resulted in a big argument between the two, which ended with his mother stabbing his father before committing the unthinkable himself. Chan is taken aback by the revelation, but he continues sharing his experience. He says that in James's inner world, he was able to see both his dark side and his good side, but in the end, the good side failed. The serial killer himself was actually a tunnel engineer. Hence, when he went into coma, he began to establish a tunnel in his brain as the symbolic carrier of his chaotic consciousness. The tunnel in his consciousness is just a dead loop which leads to nowhere. When Chien entered James's brain, his initial target was to lead him out of this endless loop so that James could wake up from his coma. However, he didn't expect there to be so many split personalities. Thus, Chien had to communicate with all of them so that he could find clues about his wife's imprisonment. His new mission was to find the real criminal among these personalities and interrogate him or her for the answer. As he bonded with these personalities, he found out more about them. The best one was Lee, who resembles James's healthy and rational side. There was hope that this good personality could outweigh the others and get James out of this loop. Unfortunately, he suddenly disappeared after the lights went out in the tunnel. The disappearance of this personality resulted in the chaos of the situation. The second personality was the driver Tony, who eventually became violent. This resembles James's violent personality. The third and fourth personalities were Wang and Sarah, who resemble James's inner projection of his own mother and father. His father was an insurance salesman, while his mom was a model. The sad thing is that when the father was abusive to James, his mother didn't care much about him and instead ended up having an affair with their driver. This was represented when Sarah made out with the driver, Tony, just for food. The fifth was the pregnant lady, Jing, resembling his ideal image of a mother. Although it is a good personality, it didn't quite suppress his dark side, so it also met its doom. The sixth and seventh personalities were the twins, who resemble his childhood personality, autistic, weird, feminish, but very talented in math and space physics. But there is one more personality that was not on the bus. It is the fiercest personality, and always hidden in the dark. This is the personality that secretly killed Lee, the driver Tony, and Wang. But to find out more, Qian needs another experiment. The next day comes, and Qian undergoes the second phase of the memory transfusion. This time, he directly confronts James and demands his wife's whereabouts. However, the cold-blooded killer doesn't want to give up the information so quickly. Instead, he starts talking about how he hates his mother for killing his dad. This insecurity towards women is why he abducts them and finishes them off. Saying this much, he takes Qian to different parts of his subconscious, where various events of his life are being played out. However, focusing on his mission, Qian disregards all of them and confronts the autistic personality Park, the weakest of James's personalities. He tries manipulating the boy to give up the coordinates to his wife's location, but his twin sister Fang stops him. Following this, Qian is transported to a cinema hall, where he encounters the real evil behind all the murders inside the tunnel. It is revealed to be none other than Qian himself. It turns out that James's subconscious is so messed up and evil that the one who looks into it also starts thinking like a serial killer. The evil Qian reveals that he didn't want Ciara to be saved, so he killed the people inside the tunnel one by one, including the newborn baby. Suddenly, the scared autistic boy Park appears on stage, and so does Qian's wife. Park slowly approaches Ciara to kill her, but at the last moment, he backs out. Taking this as the perfect opportunity, the real Qian approaches the scared boy and requests him to wake up and tell the authorities about his wife's location. Surprisingly, Park agrees and walks away. Then, the evil Qian takes him to a different setting, where the two get ready for one final showdown. Soon, the two start fighting with one another, but when the real Qian feels like he's victorious, another clone of evil Qian shows up, implying that he's indestructible. Elsewhere, the rain has started pouring in, and Ciara is almost neck deep in the water. It is only a matter of minutes before she drowns to death. Back inside James's subconsciousness, the real Qian pleads to let him back into his world, but his evil doppelganger refuses to listen. Just then, the real Qian comes up with a plan. He realizes that if he 
he commits the unthinkable, the evil Qian will also die. And with this, all of the evil inside James will go away. And as soon as he goes through with his plan, the evil Qian fades away. And at the hospital, James wakes up. Being a totally changed man, he immediately tells the authorities about Ciara's location. In this way, Ciara is saved in the nick of time. But Qian doesn't wake up. The movie ends as he wanders around the endless tunnel, indicating that he will never return home. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.